Good, good afternoon, I started to say, because it is afternoon. Uh, I have no idea when you might be watching this, so hello instead. Um, we, uh, I'm going to go over the introductory problem with you now. You'll notice these problems are getting longer, um, more involved. Um, you, to, to give you a point of reference on this introductory problem, tra accounting tradition or teaching education tradition, um, we would have asked students to do um, three or four exercises early in the week, maybe one every night, um, and uh, practice what was in the chapter, and then do a, a comprehensive program problem over the weekend, and then saved all of those chapters up and done one exam at the, <clears throat> at the end of three or four weeks. So um, if it was a midterm, maybe after four weeks, four weeks, and four weeks, you'd take three midterms, and then you'd have your final in week 15, 16. So um, this approach this semester is a little different. I am trying to let you learn vicariously by seeing the solution. Um, some of you have found mistakes in the solution. Um, and please um, be tolerant, be compassionate. These authors um, spend a lot of time making these up, but you can tell the size of this book. There are going to be some mistakes. Um, if you see a mistake, just correct it. If you want to tell me about it, I'll um, send an email to the class or classes so that they will know. Um, you will see some notes that says for instructor use, and so my use is to share it with you. So um, I hope that you um, understand and, and benefit from this. If you're not benefiting from this and you would rather be working problems, you can tell me and um, we'll change how we do the introductory uh, part of the chapter. But um, it's really up to you to, to tell me what works best for your learning. Remember here, our goal is that you'll learn and you'll be able to earn enough points to pass those uh, exams every week. And we're not taking exams over three or four chapters. We're taking them one chapter at a time, weekly, and um, so that you could focus on the material as a package uh, all together. When you're ready to take a test on um, accrual accounting, you could take a test on accrual accounting. When you're ready to take a test on journal entries, you can take a test on double entry accounting systems. So um, you let me know what's working well for you. Uh, for Chapter 3, the introductory problem is Exercise 321A on page 174. As I have to do here, I'm going to be turning away from the camera and not speaking to you every time because I'm going to be reading the book to you when we're working on the problems. But um, I'll come back to the camera each time as I try to explain it to you. So um, Exercise 321A says, Recording events in the general journal. So um, when you studied the chapter, um, you learned about recording events. It was towards the end of the chapter. And um, we, we taught you about, we showed you how to write general journal entries. And then we posted them to T accounts. I think this is about pages um, maybe 151, 152 uh, in there someplace. And then prepare a trial balance. So these are just those three steps you do. Enter the uh, journal entries, post those to the T accounts, prepare a trial balance. So when you're looking at this um, general journal in front of you, um, it says Davis Gray Cleaners at the top, dry cleaners at the top, um, because that's the company's name. It says General Journal and it's for the year of 2013. Over in the far right hand column, it has event and they're numbered the same as the numbers in the book. And then the account titles go in this uh, large column that's next. Um, the way of writing these are that whatever account you want to debit, that account name is written first and flushed to the left-hand margin. Whatever account you want to credit is written second and indented um, on the second line. So debits to the left, credits to the right. Now then you'll notice that in a general journal there's only two columns, a debit column and a credit column. 
debits are written first and credits are written second just the way the account titles are presented so you'll have a debit um, on the left and credits in the right hand column remember that was our definition of a T account it was and the definition of a debit a definition of a debit is an entry that was written in the left and the definition of a credit is the entry that was written in the right and it's only the theory of debits and credits that tells the effect on the account whether the account is going up or down so in the first transaction the following events apply to Davis dry cleaners in 2013 its first year of operations number one received so we had something coming in if we're receiving it and this time we're receiving forty five thousand dollars in cash from the issue of common stock so the first entry you see here on the um, solution is event number one a debit to cash forty five thousand a credit to common stock forty five thousand cash is an asset it goes up with the debit we received more cash so we should be increasing the cash account with the debit common stock we issued more common stock so we have more common stock outstanding so common stock went up common stock is an equity account we're increasing an equity account so we increase it with a credit now I said in the overview video I really encourage you to just talk to yourself until you've heard this enough times you can hear it in a routine and you can begin to think how these transactions are working. Event number two, earned $37,500. So as soon as I see the word earned, I think revenue, revenue recognition, <clears throat> that my, my company can show increase in revenue because I've earned that money from my customers. So I'm going to recognize it with a journal entry. So earned $37,500 of service revenue and I earned it on account. Now that term on account means either account receivable or account payable. So if I've earned this money and they haven't paid it to me yet, I want to receive this money from them later. So it's going to be an account payable to me. So this on account is for accounts receivable. Now when I write the journal entry for event two, I'm going to debit the asset accounts receivable because the asset accounts receivable is going up. People owe me more money than they did before to the tune of $37,500. And then the credit is going to be to service revenue because I've earned this money, revenues can go up and you increase revenues with a credit. So I'm going to credit service revenues, $37,500. And that's exactly what the solution shows us right here. I'm going to pull these up just a bit so you can still see them, but you'll see more. And I'll have to do this throughout the activity because of my picture and because I want you to see this on a large screen. Number three, incurred. Now when I've incurred something, I have more of something than I had before. Might not be a good thing, but I have more of it than I had before. Incurred, 37000 uh, uh, $15,000 of operating expenses. So I had to buy some operating expenses, I had to pay for some operating expenses and um, so uh, and I, I did that uh, on account. I incurred them and I did it on account. Now that means I have to pay it so that's accounts payable. So the on account here says I have to pay the my suppliers $15,000 so it's going to be accounts payable. So now then as we process this through, operating expenses are an expense account. They're going up. You increase an expense account with a debit. So I'm going to debit operating expenses and I'm going to debit them for the full amount, $15,000. I have now an obligation to pay these people in the future that's going to be a liability 
accounts payable is my liability account when I have to pay somebody. My obligations are going up. You increase a liability with a credit. So I'm crediting accounts payable, my obligation to pay these people in the future for $15,000. And that's exactly the transaction that was written here. As I go through this, I'm giving you the words that you need to hear and the words that you need to practice and the words that you need to use in your own logic process as you determine how to write these journal entries. Okay, let's look at number four. Now number four says received. Now if I've received something, I've got more of it than I had before. So received means something's going up. And I've received cash. And I've received cash for performing services. So my cash is going up. Cash is an asset. You debit an asset to increase it. So I'm going to debit cash, $30,000, to increase the account by the amount of cash I've received. Now service revenue says I've earned this money because they're paying me. I did the work, we exchanged assets, I did labor, they did cash. And so the revenue is going up. Revenue increases with a credit. So I'm going to credit service revenue and I'm for $30,000 because I'm entitled to this money that I've earned this money that they uh, are paying me. So that's transaction four. Transaction five, paid. When we see that word paid, we know the cash is going out. So we see that we paid something, so we're going to have less cash than we had before. We're going to, we paid $12,000 in cash, so cash is going down by $12,000 because I paid some of it out. To purchase land. Now land is going up because I have more land than I had before because I purchased land. Land and cash are both assets, so I have one asset land going up and I have one asset cash going down. So I'm going to um, debit land to increase it. It's an asset that's going up by $12,000. And I'm going to credit the asset cash because cash is going down and I want to reduce this asset and you reduce an asset with a credit. Now you can begin to feel, I think, perhaps at this time that um, it, it's a little confusing, it's very wordy, there's a, a complex uh, logic process that I think through which is the account, what kind of an account is that, is it going up and down, how do I increase or decrease that account um, with debits and credits. And it feels awkward and cumbersome at first. So this first week I know that you'll be uh, bogged down at times, you'll be discouraged at times, um, but I want to be an encourager. I want to tell you to keep going, keep practicing, because by the time we get through uh, chapters 3 and chapters 4, then, or after we get through chapters 3 and 4, um, then you'll begin to be a little more comfortable with this. It does take time, but it also takes endurance, so stay with me. All right, now, um, transaction 5 was the land, and now we want to look at transaction 6. Transaction 6 says collected. So when I collected something, I have more of it than I had before. So whatever this is, is increasing. So collected $30,000. So I have more cash than I had before. From accounts receivable. So these people have paid me off. They paid, my, they paid their debt to me. So now my accounts receivable are going down. They don't owe me as much money as they did before because they're giving me this cash. Now, the kind of accounts that cash and accounts receivable are, they're both assets. The asset cash is going up. The asset accounts receivable is going down. 
So I increase the asset cash with a debit and I decrease the asset accounts receivable with a credit. So I'm going to debit cash for, th uh, for 33000 because cash is going up. And I'm going to credit accounts receivable for 33000 because accounts receivable are coming down. Now, when I've been working with these cash accounts, um, it reminds me to tell you something. Many people think that credits are good and debits are bad because when they credit your checking account or your savings account, it's, it makes you feel good. It's a good to you. Well, the truth is your checking account and your savings account is a liability to that bank. It's an obligation that they have to take care of your money and to make it available to you when the time comes. So your account is a liability. When you have more money in your account, the bank has a bigger liability. So the, account, the bank is only crediting your account to make its liability to you going up. It's not that a credit is a good, it's just that it increases a liability. And when they credit your account, they have a bigger obligation to you than they had before. So if you're feeling any misnomers about debits being bad and credits being good, I'm going to suggest that that comes to you from prior experience and experience you didn't really completely understand. So work with the theory of debits and credits as it's presented to you in the book, not perhaps as you've had an emotional attachment to it in the past due to experiences you've had. Now then, that's enough about, chapter, about transaction six. So let's look on to transaction seven. Transaction seven says received. So when I receive something, it's going up. And this time, I'm receiving cash again. So cash is going up. But that cash is an advance for services. So that's that unearned revenue where I'm getting money in advance, but I have to make good on those baseball tickets or those Laker tickets or that symphony or that ballet or to um, paint that house, whatever the revenue that I haven't earned yet is going to be um, earned for. I, have, I haven't done that work yet, but they paid me in advance. So my cash is going to go up, but my liability is going to go up also. I have an obligation to perform a ballet, to deliver a baseball game, to paint a house, whatever the unearned revenue is. So in number seven, we have cash. It's going up. Cash is an asset. So I increase an asset with a debit. I have, what were the words they use? An advance for services. So I have an obligation to perform services to these people. That obligation is a liability. It's going up because I'm more of a liability now than I had before. So unearned revenues, the liability is going up. I increase a liability with a credit. So the journal entry over here is debit cash, credit a liability, the debit the asset cash, credit the liability unearned revenues. Each for $9,000, the amount of cash that was received and the amount of revenue that will eventually be earned. Number eight, purchased. So I bought something. So I have more of something than I had before. Purchased $1,350 of supplies. So my su supplies are going up. And I purchased those on account. I didn't pay for them. I purchased them on account. So I have a greater obligation to pay my suppliers uh, in the future than I had before. So the assets, so supplies are an asset. The asset's going up. So I'm going to debit the asset to increase it. My on account is accounts payable because I have to pay these people in the future. Accounts payable is a liability, an obligation to pay um, my suppliers in the future, but it's going up, so I increase a liability with a credit. So I, I debit supplies to increase it, 
$1,350. I credit the liability accounts payable, $1,350. And that's how I record that transaction number eight. Now, number nine, accounts payable. Excuse me, number nine, made an $11,200 payment. So that's telling me the first part says I made a payment. So I let go of some of my cash. In fact, I let go of $11,000 of my cash and um, there I have less cash than I had before. But I did that on accounts payable. So I have less of an obligation to pay those people than I had before because I paid off some of my obligation. So as I think that went through, the asset cash is coming down. So I'm going to credit cash to reduce it. The liability accounts payable is coming down. I'm going to debit that liability to reduce it. So the a journal in the entry is going to be debit to accounts payable to reduce the liability, credit to cash to reduce the cash. Both of them for $11,250. And that's transaction nine. Transaction 10 is the <clears throat> paid, so I have cash going out, I have less money than I had before, a $7,500 cash dividend. So cash is, is less than it was before because I paid out some of my cash. But it was for a dividend, so my owner's equity is less than it was before because I distributed some of that money in, that was in owner's equity out to uh, my uh, stockholders. So as we think this thing through, cash is an asset and it's going down, so I'm going to credit an asset to reduce it. Liability is an obligation. It's accounts payable, but I have less of an obligation than I had before, so I reduce accounts payable with a debit. The journal entry that's, excuse me, dividends. Um, so dividends, the retained, the retained earnings is less, so I reduce retained earnings through paying out a dividend. Sorry, I looked up at the screen and saw the wrong uh, account. So I'll debit dividends, which will actually increase my dividends account, but it'll make my owner's equity go down. And then credit my cash, both of them for 7500 So debit dividends to increase it, credit cash reduce it. Owner's equity is a, um, dividends is an owner's equity account. And it's going up because it's got a minus sign in front of it. It's a negative owner's equity or a contra owner's equity. We'll start calling it in a couple of chapters. Sorry for my misspeak there. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Number 11. Recognized 750 of supplies expense. So this is my adjusting entry. It's my first adjusting entry. I'm going to recognize um, 750 of supplies expense. Now, in chapter two, they taught us how to calculate all of that and determine how much was going to be recognized. And we segregated those mixed balances and decided how much should be in the expense and how much should stay in the asset or how much should be in the expense and show in the liability, the obligation to pay for it in the future. But now they're just giving us the word, okay, recognize this and trust us that it ha there's a mathematics behind it from chapter two. So in recognize 750 of supplies expense, I want to debit supplies expense to increase it because it's an expense and it's going up. And I want to credit the asset supplies to reduce it because I don't have that many supplies that I had before. And both of them are for 750. So we have an expense going up with a debit, we have an asset coming down with a credit in transaction 11. In transaction 12, I'm going to recognize $7,500 of revenue for services. So now I'm going to recognize revenue. So I'm going to, revenue is going up because I'm recognizing it. So I'm going to credit revenue to increase it. But my unearned revenue obligation for the future is, all, is coming down. 
because I don't have that liability anymore. And I have a liability that's coming down, so I decrease a liability with a debit. So the journal entry I'm going to write is to debit unearned revenues to reduce that liability, and I'm going to rec credit service revenue to increase revenues, service revenues, and recognize the work I've done for my customers, providing them with a service. Transaction 12. Now let's go on to transaction 13. In transaction 13, recognized $1,350 of interest revenue. It's accrued over the period of time. Now back in chapter um, 2, we learned about calculating the interest and uh, knowing exactly how much it was. Here it's just telling us to recognize it. So interest receivable is an asset. Somebody's going to pay that to me in the future. So this is interest that uh, I have earned because I let them uh, use some money. So I have interest revenue because I made them a loan. They have a, I have a receivable from them. Um, and interest receivable matches with uh, a note receivable. So here I have interest revenue being recognized as a credit because it's going up. And I have interest receivable being recognized with a debit because it's an asset and it's going up. Increase the receivable asset with a debit. Increase the revenue with a credit. Now there were 13 transactions that we just recorded all using the theory of debits and credits by writing out these journal entries. Now of course they were already written out for you. You could just read them along but um, the next step is, of course, when you start working a problem, you're going to be writing these out yourself. The next um, step is to um, record T accounts. Now, I'm going to show you this page. Here are our T accounts. They're set up with assets on the left equals liabilities in the middle plus owner's equity. So the assets equal the liabilities plus owner's equity. We have T accounts now for all of the accounts. So I have cash, an entry on the left is a debit, an entry on the right is a credit. And I have all of the assets over here. I have accounts receivable, interest receivable, supplies, and land. And then um, the debits are on the left, the credits are on the right for all of these. There were no beginning balances because this was a new business when we started. So looking at the liabilities, I have accounts payable and unearned revenues. Those are the only two liabilities in this exercise. For stockholders equity, I have common stock, retained earnings, dividends, service revenues, operating expenses, supplies, expenses, and interest um, revenue. So I have all these revenue and expense accounts over here under retained earnings, and then I have common stock um, over as with the contributed capital. So now quite literally what I do is I look up here at transaction event one, and it's a debit to cash of $45,000. So I come over here and I quite literally write event one, debit to cash. I'm putting it on the left-hand side to cash. Over here, I'm not worrying right now about um, that making anything go up or down. I know in my mind that it does make it, I, I made that determination back when I wrote the journal entry. Transferring it over here, it's going to have an impact when I do my math later, but right now I'm just transferring the balance into this account. Now the other part of entry one was common stock, and that was a credit. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look at owner's equity. I'm going to find common stock. I'm going to find the credit size. I'm going to put a 1 on the right-hand side for the credit. And I'm going to put $45,000 in cash. And quite literally, I just make those transfers. So for number 2, I have a debit to accounts receivable. So I look at accounts receivable. Over here, there's number 2, $37,500. And that's the debit. I look at the credit. And the credit is service re um, revenue. 
Revenues are over here under retained earnings. There's the service revenue, and I write it down as a credit. Now, um, I, I, I feel like um, I feel like it wouldn't be in my class if you couldn't do this uh, on your own. So I'm not going to do all 13 of these. I'm going to do one more and show you how. Then I'm going to leave it to you to make these transfers. So uh, three is operating expense and it's a debit. So I'm going to come down here to operating expenses under um, retained earnings. It's kind of retained earnings right here, operating expense right there. Number three on the debit side, I'm going to put in 15000 and then um, it's for accounts payable. Oops, it's for accounts payable for number three as a credit. So I come over here and find the liabilities. I find accounts payable number three, and I put in the fifteen thousand. And quite literally, we enter all of those. Um, we enter all of those transactions into these T accounts. When all of the entries are entered into the T accounts, we draw a line underneath the T accounts and we determine the balance. Now here is where I want to show you that heavy paragraph that I talked about that was on page 140 or 145 or something. But um, anyway, you'll remember the paragraph. Um, cash is an asset. As debits increase assets. So I'm going to add together all the debits and find out how much the account increased. And then I'm going to add together all the credits and find out how much they decreased. And then the difference between those two will be my balance. Now, if you were on Excel, you would just highlight the column that had all these debits and highlight all the columns that had these credits and it would calculate this for you because you'd have it programmed for pluses and minuses. Um, since you're doing these, since you're looking at this and it would be on a hand calculator, you would add together the debits, 45, 30, 33, and 9, and then you would just change the sign and you would subtract 12, 11,250, and 7,500, and you would get this balance. So quite literally all you're doing is you're adding the way the account is increased with the theory of debits and credits. So assets, expenses, and dividends increase with debits. So you'd be adding all the debits and you'd be subtracting all the credits to get this balance. Liabilities, stockholders' equity, and revenues all increase with credits. So in the liabilities, I would be adding the credits because that's how that, that account increases. And I'd be subtracting the debits and I'd be getting this balance. In common stock, I'd be adding the credits. There are no debits, so I would just have the balance of that one credit transaction. Um, you can look at debits and service revenue and see um, the, serv the revenues go up with credits, so the balance is in the credit side for a debit. The account increases with a, for the dividends, the account increases with the debit, so the balance is a debit. What you're going to be doing is using just mathematics and the theory of debits and credits and determining the balances of every one of these accounts after these 13 transactions. <clears throat> now when you have those balances calculated, they're pretty much a jumble over here on this page. They're all over the place. So we have to find a way to organize them. And that's what the trial balance was. So a trial balance is um, a, f a form that we use, a schedule that we use. And it has the name at the top of the company, the name of the schedule, trial balance. It's on a point in time. It's as of December 31st. It lists all the account titles um, in the uh, first column on the left and they're listed by the order that they appear in the accounting equation. So the assets come first, the liabilities come second, owner's equity comes third, revenues come fourth, and expenses come fifth. And then a place for totals. You have two columns, a debit column and a credit column. And you look back at those T accounts and you find that asset and the balance is um, 86250 
and you transfer that balance right over here and it's a debit and so you just continue through all the accounts accounts receivable has 4500 and you bring over the 4500 um, you continue through all the assets until all the assets are recorded then when you come to the liabilities you have their credits so you have to switch those over to the credit column and here the liabilities are with its balance the accounts payable is with its balance and the unearned revenue is with its balance and you put those balances in there's the common whoops lost my guide um, there's the common stock and with its balance and so I put the its balance there but now I have dividends and dividends carry um, a debit balance so this seventy five hundred dollars is over on the debit side and so that'll have to be entered in the debit column you'll have to enter it in the uh, trial balance where its balance is recorded which is in this case in the dividends service revenue and interest revenue are both credits operating expenses and supplies are both debits and then you total them remember what you're trying to see is that the totals equal one another if the totals don't equal one another you probably have an, you have a, an error somewhere the error could be in the transactions but it also could be and when you transferred the numbers to the T accounts and it could also be when you added the T accounts so <clears throat> there's not a, a fast way of getting at the uh, errors most of us start with the um, journal entries and see if we've done those correctly with the debits and the credits and then check the way we've transferred those balances forward and then check the math you probably wouldn't want to check the math on all those transactions only to find out that you put land in the wrong column up there on those journal entries so that's why uh, really that we do the journal entries because we're checking the easiest fastest thing first and then the more complex calculations all those additions and subtractions at the end when this uh, trial balance equals all the trial balance is saying is that these totals equal one another not that the transactions are correct but just that the totals equal one another now in doing this problem what we've learned is how to write general journal entries how to use the theory of debits and credits to uh, record these transactions and our logic or our thought process says the way I've recorded these here will make them go up and down the way that's appropriate so then you post all of those into these T accounts so that you can determine the balance and see if it is going up and down the way you want it to and then when you get those balances you prepare this trial balance so that the total of the trial balance well they prepare this trial balance listing all the accounts in the order they appear in the accounting equation listing their debit balances and credit balances in each column whichever respective place you would record it and then adding them together and this balance says the totals equal one another so that's the um, introductory problem I hope that uh, I hope that demonstrating a problem to you this way uh, letting you have it in a YouTube video that you can watch over and over again is is meaningful if it's not you can let me know but um, I hope that it prepares you then to go on and do your problem yourself so um, this has been a good presentation introduction of the uh, theory of debits and credits and in the next video you're going to apply them to the um, comprehensive problem or to your Excel problem for this week. See you in those learning events.